What's up everyone? Welcome to episode 5. Some good feedback on the last episode. Everyone seemed to really enjoy stepping up to 2-5. A lot bigger pots. Some more interesting hands. So today, I think we're going to head to the casino again. Jump in the 2-5 game. Wales against USA will be on the TV at 11. It's World Cup season. So let's get into it. What's up everyone, welcome back to episode 5 of the poker vlog, today we're back here at Park for some 2-5 action, although the 10 straddle was on for most of the game, so the game played bigger, 2-5-10, a lot of the same regulars from last episode are in, shout out to Patrick sitting on our right, said he's seen the vlog, gave us some good feedback, although he's the villain that we doubled up through with the 6-7 suited hand last episode, so he said we're well in his crosshairs and he's looking for revenge. Kicking off this first hand, we open Queen Jack off, the $20 under the gun too, and just the big blind decides to come along. We go heads up to a flop, comes Jack 4-3 with two clubs, there's 42 in the middle, and he donk leads into us for 50. Think with top pair, not a great kicker here, we're happy to just call, probably have the best hand, and let's see a turn. Turn comes in off to 5, now when he checks to us, I'm confident we probably have the best hand, so we want to keep going. Get some value. We bet 75 and he calls pretty quickly. River comes a 6. Board now reads Jack 4, 3, 5, 6. So there's a 4 liner to a straight out there. When he checks, I think we have a decision here. Do we want to check back or go for some value? I think if I had a hand like A Shack, I'd be more inclined to go for some value. Get some weaker jacks to call us. But I think with Queen Jack, we could probably go with a small bet. We probably should have went with a small bet. But I think checking back is also fine when there's a four liner out there. It's easier for him to rep when the straight cards being in the big blinds. We can sometimes get blown off our hand. So we're happy to check it back. Turn over our hand and it's the winner. In this next hand, we look down at the same cards, same suit as the hand before. Queen Jack off. There's a limp under the gun and we decide to ISO up to 25 in middle position. Just the limp are calls and we go heads up to a flop. Flop comes down ace 10 4 rainbow. So we flop good shot here but we should have the range advantage. Especially when under gun limps he's probably a recreational player so we're going to go ahead and bet. We bet 30 into a pot of 57 and he decides to call. Turn comes another ace. Pairing the top card, so it's ace, 10, four, ace. I think we're credibly gonna have a lot more aces than he has, so we wanna size up with a big bet. We decide on 115 into 117. I think a big bet works here because it just puts max pressure on some middle and pocket pairs that aren't gonna be able to handle the heat and just have to let it go. We also still can hit our king, a queen, a jack might be good if he doesn't have an ace, so happily to barrel here. He calls, and we go heads up to the river. Comes an offsuit seven, he checks, and we decide we should just give up here. Probably has an ace, and if he does, he's definitely not folding. We check it back, and he turns over. A6 off for trips. Straddles on here, there's a limp in early position at 10, and we bump it up in middle position to $40 with pocket tens. The seat beside us calls, lay position decides to bump it up to $140, playing a stack of about 400 bucks. I decide, I think Colin, and then the other player is going to come along a lot, so we end up going three ways out of position with tens. The guy with the short stack will have less than pop behind, so he just is going to jam a lot. We get put in some pretty tough decisions, so I think a hand can definitely be good here against a short stack. It's 40 bigs effective. So we click it back to 330 to fold out the guy in between. Late position sticks in, it's 400, and we call it off. He turns over the bad news, pocket aces, and our 10 shrivel up like a dip in a cold lake. Board's gonna come out, we need to hit a 10 or some miracle cards to give us a straight. We get a nice sweaty flop of 869 to give us a gutter. Jack on the turn. Makes him sweat a bit now as we turn an open ender. But the river comes down a brick. And after a spicy turn in river, the aces hold up. So we double this guy up. But don't think we could do much else for 40 bigs effective. When the game's 2-5-10, 
it makes a lot of stacks shorter especially the four five hundred dollar stacks so don't think we can do much but give them the double up nice hand not really going our way this session so far so after a bit of pork fried rice to refuel we top up 600 to bring us back up to a thousand stack and jump back into the mix we open sixes on the button to 30 the big blind calls flop comes three four five two hearts one club we have an over pair and an open ender we're definitely going to want to bet here to protect our hand we don't want them to see some free cards with any over cards that are going to be bad for our hand even if we are behind to a bigger pair we do have a lot of outs so we size up about 50 into 62. Big blind calls and the turn comes the ace of clubs bringing a second flush draw. Now any deuces are straight. I think if we were bluffing this would be a card that we could barrel on. Although he should have a lot more twos than we do. I think he does have some ace highs. He definitely actually has a lot of ace highs that are going to call the flop. Because he also has the straight draw. So with this being a bad card for us. After he checks we decide to check it back. River comes an ace of clubs, bets 85, seems pretty value-y this sizing, uh, I think he could definitely be value betting an ace, could definitely have a deuce, although I think he might go bigger with a deuce if he thinks we have an ace, so I think we're just going to let it go and move on to another hand. So we have the 10 straddle on this hand, under the gun limps, falls all the way around to the small blind who raises to 25, pretty small raise out of position with the 10 straddle on. So we have pretty easy call here with 9, 10 off. Under the gun comes along and we go three ways to a flop. Comes queen a3 rainbow. So we flop a good shot. Small blind bets 25. One third pot. I think getting a pretty good price here. We're going to come along with a good shot. We can turn our straight. There's some bluff cards that can come. We can turn some more equity. So we're going to peel and under the gun folds. Turn comes a queen pairing the top card. There's now 1, 2, 5 in the middle. Small blind bet 75. I think a hand is too poor to call with just a gutter, but I think it makes a good candidate as a bluff. We've only 10 high at the moment. We do have some outs if we're behind. I think villains sometimes will double barrel some pairs on this board that aren't a queen if they just have a hand like pocket tens. There's, they want to just keep betting get us to foul they don't want some bad cards come down they can also be bluffing with some king highs some ace highs so we're gonna raise it up here to 200 bucks hope that he folds if he calls hope we hit our jack he sticks around and we're going off to the races to see a river river comes down a six there's now 525 in the middle if he checks to us we're planning on blasting off unfortunately well not unfortunately fortunately for us he bets 100 to block sizing we just fold he shows us pocket eights for a full house so him leading the river saved us some money there because i think when we get to the river here with 10 high we're probably gonna lick the stamp and send it in so we avoided a disaster there we're having a rough session today with the top up another 400 bucks bringing us up to two grand we're into the game for we look down at ace 10 off under the gun one we're hoping this the hand that can get us back into it we bump it up middle position calls middle position two calls small blind calls and the straddle calls there's 150 in the middle after a raise of 30 gets called in four spots and we go five ways to a flop comes queen deuce three with two spades and a heart checks to us i think we've nothing going on here against four other players don't think we want to be taking any stabs we're just going to check hope that it checks around maybe we spike an ace on the turn so we check it checks all the way around turn comes to ace of hearts now gives us top pair when it checks to us again i think we probably have the best hand don't want to go too big we want some value but we're still five ways in this pot here so i think using a big size and can be a bit dangerous especially if we get raised we don't have the strongest ace it's only ace 10 so there is better aces out there so we decide to bet 80 bucks just over half pot middle position calls it's back to the straddler he's an aussie reg and he decides 80 is too little to play and bangs it up to 400 dollars pretty big check raise sends us into the tank with 750 in our stack debating 
shoving could be an option sometimes, but when we get called, we're probably in bad shape or at least up against a draw. Maybe there's an option. Could be a torch though. So we're not really in a folding mood. We've been struggling to make some hands all day, and I think something about the size and could be a slight tell. I think with our stack size being 750 before the turn bet or after our turn bet with 750. So if say the straddle has a hand like four or five which is a straight i don't think he wants to go so big because he doesn't need to. he can still get the stacks in and the river versus me and he doesn't want me to fold so i think the sizing is a bit of a giveaway that maybe he doesn't have a made hand yet he could be bluffing he could be bluffing with a lot of equity that's another thing he could still be in pretty good shape but after some time in the tank i decide it's time to make the stand we're not going to let him away with it we're going to call close our eyes Hope the river's clean, call when we've only 350 left in our stack. So we decide to call, middle position gets out of the way. River comes down to 10 of hearts, bringing in the back door flush. It's now a straight out there, King Jack makes it straight. So not the best card, but it does give us two pair. The good thing is it makes our decision easy. We're never folding when we've two pair and 350 left. There's 10, 30 in the middle. He sticks us all in, we snap call, and he turns over 6-7 off for air that he was just turning into a bluff. Our old Aussie friend Steve Irwin would say, Crikey! <laughs> we caught a wild one, and we caught a wild one this hand. That gets us right back in the game, we're back up to a stack of 1900, so just down 100 bucks. We're going to play on and try to get back to even. So this hand, we're about to play the biggest part of the vlog so far. There's a limp of 10 in middle position and we make it 50 to go on the board. The big blind decides to tree bet 200 bucks. It's four XRAs. The big blind is essentially the small blind this hand because the straddle is on. So I wouldn't say it's as tight as a big blind tree betting range would be. But I think we have an option between four betting or calling. I think 100 bigs deep, this is always going to be a four bet. I think we're close to 200 bigs deep here. We start the hand with $1,900. So I think we can mix in some calls. I think the benefits to mixing in some calls is that if we four bet, he's gonna know that's a pretty tight range and it allows him to fold a lot of the bluffs that he four bets with. Don't think he'd five bet a hand that isn't aces or kings this deep. So I think sometimes calling here can be nice because it allows him to flop some top pairs with some ace x that he tree bets i'd imagine he's nearly tree betting probably all suited aces here so i think having ace king here it's nice as a call sometimes so we decide to call we go heads up to a flop comes down a good one comes ace queen five with two spades and one club so we have top pair top kicker here Pretty happy with our hand. Our hand's gonna be slightly disguised when we just call. We're pretty much at the top of our range here. I don't think he'll put us on a hand as strong as Ace King. This is a board I'd expect him to probably see about 100% of its range. And that's exactly what he does. He bets 160 into a pot of 420. We have a decision here. I think we can raise for value sometimes here with top pair, top kicker on this board. I think Colin is also going to be fine. So we go with the latter option in the end. We decide just to call and the turn comes to five of diamonds. Board now reads ace queen five five. So it means all aces that aren't ace king and ace queen are now chopping. Because if he had say ace five, the difference between ace five and ace ten now is nothing. They both have a pair of aces, a pair of fives and a queen. So he barrels 375 into a pot of 740. I think we have the same decision here. I think Colin is probably our best option again. We're at the top of our range here. Our hand is slightly disguised. He's going to probably be doing a lot of bluffing on this board. We actually, I ran it through a sim after a good friend of mine, Johnny McCullough, tournament crusher from Ireland. So shout out Johnny. He was kind enough to run the sim for us after the hand. And we found up 200 bigs deep. Ace King mixed in a call and a four bet, so the call pre was fine. And on the turn, he should be doing a lot of over betting here. He has a big range advantage. So when you bet 375, I think we just have a pretty standard call here again. We're likely to have the best hand. You can still have a lot of bluffs. We're unlikely to be behind that often, so I don't think we do anything else but just call. River comes to Jack of Clubs, does complete the straight. 
one of the hands I'd expect them to be bluffing with is King-10 suited. We do block one of the kings, but if he does have a bluff like King-10 suited he's now got there, I think... Don't expect them ever to be barreling jacks as a bluff twice, so I think we can rule out a set of jacks. I think he would also have King Jack suited, that is bluffing, and now he rivers third pair, which he probably knows isn't going to be good. So I'd expect to see him bet here, and he decides to stick us all in for the rest of our remaining chips. We don't think that long, I think our hand is just a call. When we check the solver after, the solver just calls. It actually folds all ace king with a spade and calls every other ace king. We don't have a spade here, so this is just a call. We put in the call, we get shown the bad news. He's ace queen for flop two pair. Takes the stack, nearly a 4k pot. That's the difference between up 2k or being down 2k for the day. So I think after this pot, we're gonna wrap up the session. So that wraps up a pretty rough session today. Don't think we could have done much in the last hand there with the ace king. Pretty big pop, but when you jump up from one three to two five ten, obviously the pot's gonna be way bigger. We started off early, clawed it back to even, but by that stage we're into the game for like two K. Then play that massive pot with ace king. I think we just have to call a tough range, run into ace queen, pretty unlucky on the bad side of variance. But what can you do on to the next one? So Thanks for tuning in to episode 5. We'll be back next week for episode 6. So keep it locked and we'll see you then. Peace.